Hey, welcome back to another exciting episode of Yogi's Garage. If you've been following along on my Porsche experience, you'll know that I purchased this 2002 Porsche 911 Carrera from a seller in Florida back in April of this year. Well, like anything that you buy sight unseen, I knew the risks, I accepted the risks, and what came with it was quite a shock, even though I accepted it. <laughs> the suspension was one of the many things wrong with it, including rust and rain damage and just an overall uncleanliness about this car. However, I live by the mantra, there is no reward in life without risk. I just hope that risk doesn't include bankrupting my family in order to get this car sorted. So here's where we are so far. Tackled the cabriolet issues. I've tackled the rollover and airbag electrical problems. And now I'm gonna tackle the suspension. I've wrapped up the front end. I'm gonna tackle the rear end in this video. And then we're gonna take it out for a drive and you'll see what it can do. Finally, before we begin, I wanted to talk a little bit about what the terminology unladen versus laden means. A few of my followers were commenting that I may have used the word incorrectly or that I understood it opposite of what I'm intending. Now, my public school education may be doing me a disservice here, but here's how I understand it. Here's me standing outside my awesome 2002 Porsche 911. The definition of unladen weight means what's equipped on the car minus passengers and goods. So that means body parts, the engine, but it doesn't include me or little me's or any of my packages. Therefore, it includes only the car and nothing but the car. Now let's flip it around. Here's me inside of the car with little me and all of my stuff. This puts a burden on the vehicle. Therefore, my Porsche is laden with weight. I hope this clears things up. <sighs> we are finished mostly with the front suspension and now we got to work on the rear suspension. The rear suspension is a little bit more trickier, but not by much. Simply because this car is a cabriolet, I have to raise the top, open the clamshell, and then lift the glass up Sort of like what I did during my Cabriolet video series, which if you haven't seen, please be sure to click that pop-out banner above so that you can get caught up on that story. So I'll get this in a semi-service position, and then I'll be able to remove the shocks on the rear of the car and then refresh the rest of the suspension. So let's get it going. I got a lot of work to do. Let's fix it. I got the top up on the convertible. And now I can get access to the strut tower bolts. There are, what I see are three bolts, one, two, three. And then the center one here is uh, for the actual shock itself. All right. Since it's gotta be taken out anyway. All right. There we go, one out. I've got all the suspension out now on all four points on the car. This is the rear suspension right here. And you know, all in all, the suspension isn't all that bad. Um, these ball joints have seen better days, but the bushings overall are pretty respectable, but if I had to guess based on the condition of this and the fact that these parts are OEM, that um, this is the original equipment here. So before I put all the new suspension parts back in, like I did here, I'm gonna clean it like I did here. But what I wanted to show you is how dirty this interior wheel well is. Um, this is you know, dirt buildup. That's hydraulic fluid from when the rams on the convertible top were leaking. They're no longer leaking. But overall, this thing just needs a good clean. This is what you need to accomplish this task. Purple Power, which is gonna be your overall cleaning solution. It's a degreaser. 
it does a great job of getting a lot of this crud off. And if you take a look at this, this is 20 years of buildup of just dirt, right? So that's what this is here for, the chemical guys pump sprayer. I don't have a hose in here. So I bought one of these things, it was on sale. Um, pretty good little tool, I have fresh water in there. And then I have about two and a half gallons of fresh water as well that I'm gonna mix with purple power. My main go-to cleaning chemical will be Simple Green AP Cleaner to get a lot of this off. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna soak it with just plain water and then I'm gonna come back and spray it down with Simple Green, give it a couple of minutes to soak. And then um, I'll come back with the scrubber and get it all off. And it's gonna leave a really, really bad mess here. But I'm in a driveway and the driveway is sloped towards the garage door. So I'm gonna get the tires and a lot of this equipment off the floor so that it doesn't obstruct the water flow and I can get it out. So let's, uh, let's get started. So these are the two rear shocks that I pulled out of the car. This one here is on the passenger side and take a look at some of the damage that I found in the shock. Yeah, see that's, that's rust itself. Luckily the spring itself is fine, but you can clearly see that there's a good a bit of rust there. I'm hoping it did not damage the compression components at the top here that I need to reuse. So I'm gonna 
take all this apart, but before you do something like that, it's important that you compress the springs, just like I did on the front. I'm gonna take some pressure off of the spring and then I can zip these bolts right off and get the cap off and reuse them. There we go. Trying to keep it all together. That's the bottom. Rust fell right off. That's in really good shape. That's good, I don't have to replace that. I'm gonna keep the bellows. Needs to be cleaned, no big deal. You know how I like to do that. And certainly, can't forget about this. And this washer, as you can see, has rust all over it, but it looks like it's superficial, so I'll be able to fix that. Now, here is the shock. This is the driver's side. It looks mainly superficial, but at further glance, it looks like it started to cut right into the metal. And then on the uh, end here. So, yeah, this needed to be replaced, clearly. And I'm sure the other one is just as bad. All right, I'm ready to install the strut back into the car. But first, clearly, I gotta put it all back together. So these are the tools and these are the parts that you're gonna need. So you have the parts that you've taken off of, off of your Porsche. You've got the bellows, you've got the two, uh, I'm gonna call them beveled washers, as well as the small washer that also is uh, required. And you saw me grinding away the old rust as well as the strut cap. And you've inspected it to make sure yours is in good shape. There's no cracked rubber, no tearing, no rust, all of that good to go. And then of course, last but not least, is your spring, nice and clean. The replacement parts, uh, I'm using, like I've been telling you, the Kony Active Suspension. Really cool stuff, I can't wait to try it out. And it comes with the lower spring plate, which I'll show you how to put on because there's a, a specific way as well as a washer cap that covers up the shock on the top and a brand new nut, which is important for the cap. Tools, you'll need two spring compressors as well as a 19 millimeter box and open end wrench and a 21 millimeter, well, it all depends on your spring compressor for this one. Uh, mine's a Tecton, so it requires a 21. Okay, so we're gonna do the assembly of this really quickly because I have a, another job that I have to do, unfortunately. So starting with the lower spring plate. So this lower spring plate has a tapered or groove on the inside of the circle. This goes facing down on top of the lip here. If you try to do it upward, it'll mess up the spring alignment. So it's gotta be facing down for that. The washer itself goes on the neck at the bottom and then all the other components I'll show you as we assemble. All right, so starting with the spring plate, all the way down and sit it on that lip. Your washer cap right there and now you are ready for the uh, bellows and the uh, spring and cap. So I'm gonna put it all together, but I'm gonna to have to use the spring compressors to hold it all into place. So the narrow part of the spring goes down and sits on the spring plate on the bottom. Got it? All right, I, for I forgot one thing, and that is uh, your bump stop. There's a notch on it that goes upward, and that's where the washer, the thin washer, sits right into there on your bump stop. So back to where I was. So the next thing is your bellows, your bump stop. Be sure to push your bump stop down past the lip so that you can get your washer in on top of that. And it should sit 
together like that, all right? Then the next thing you do is you put the concave washer, concave down, so it's dome up, and then your cap. And your cap has a ring where the spring actually sits. So there's an end on it, and then there's a beginning where the curb goes in and locks into the top. And you'll immediately see that you can't get it squashed down enough to put the nut on the top, right? And no amount of strength is gonna get it to go together. So what you're gonna need to do is use your spring compressors. Okay, so we're gonna squish all this down enough to where you can start threading in your nut, get it threaded all the way to the Teflon inside of the, the, the actual lock washer inside of it and stop. When you get it in the car and you get everything torqued up is when you'll finish this up and torque it to spec. All right, these are the parts that are going back into Pepper. So as you can see, there are several components to the suspension. There's actually three control arms on the lower part of the suspension. There's this dog bone that I call a dog bone, and then this fork that actually connects to the dog bone that connects to the frame. This connects to the frame, that connects to the frame, connects to the frame, and then these two are your these are actual dog bones. Those look more like dog bones. What would you call this? Like a fiddle or something? I don't know. But anyway, and then I've got new sway bar linkage and I have the sway bar bushings coming in soon too from FCP Euro. So I'm really excited, man. Gonna get the tires back on the car, have the car inspected, and then I can move on to bigger and better things like, I don't know, engine rebuild? I mean, that's kind of what I do, right? So I'm getting there. We'll see. Let's get started. All right, all three are in. I'm gonna hand tighten them. And show you what I did on the bottom. This area is where all the business is at. So I used my jack to help support this as I pushed it up and in. One of the things that I did not share with you that I I think I should have, because uh, I forgot. The strut link here, where you attach the, the tiny little strut link, this has to be facing towards the rear. So I had to, you know, I didn't have to loosen anything, I just had to twist the shock until it's lined up, and I may still have to do some twisting, just a, a final alignment. But good news is the first part of this assembly is back together. Now I'm gonna start getting all the other pieces together as quickly as I can because there's sushi waiting for me. Another Yogi's tech tip is to always, always take photographs of your work so that you know which direction to go. This thing here. Just the ball joint to where it needs to go. Getting the dog bone in. A little word of advice is you probably should put your sway bar link in before you put everything in. No harm, no foul. So a little word of advice here, you see the brake caliper back there. If you attach this fork, you're not gonna be able to get the brake caliper up and over between this little spot here. So attach it to the frame, it pivots, get it out of the way, cut your zip tie and reattach it somewhere out of the way. Uh, got it. Son of a monkey. <sighs> Before my camera overheats again. There you go. All put together. Not torqued. Still got to put the brake on. No big deal. All right, I'm getting ready to paint the hats. And I'm just trying to figure out how I can get a template built out 
on the hat here so that I won't paint the disc itself and just paint the hat. So I came up with an idea here on the cardboard to just trace out the bottom of the hat or the, excuse me, the top of the hat and then slip it right over and this cardboard would become a shield while I'm painting. That works really good on the two front rotors. However, on the rear rotors, they're tapered. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to do that. I think I can still do it. Maybe use the same template and then just cut out a little bit extra to cover that flare. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out and then I will put it on there and run a test on it before I continue. Okay, it worked out perfectly. So I cut out a template there and I've cleaned this up with isopropyl alcohol to get every last bit of rust and what have you off of the metal here before I hit it with a primer paint combination metallic aluminum color max i picked this up at o'reilly's i think i paid six seven bucks for that isopropyl is at 70 percent. it should be a little bit higher but that should do the job Ooh, it's gonna be shiny all right wow it's really metallic <laughs> All right, so these are the, this is the rear rotor here. You can tell by the, the tapered sides here on the hat. Now, the reason why it's tapered like that is because when you pull your emergency brake or your parking brake, these extend and they push up inside the hat and lock the wheel to keep it from rolling down the hill. So my wife came up with a great idea and she decided to use foil as a mold, something really quick she molded it to the shape of the, the hat and then delicately lifted it up and then traced it to make the circle. And then I used my box cutter to do the rest. And it worked great, man. Look at this. Looks really, really good. I got a little bit of paint past, um, but I, I really wanna get this lip here. So it's not a big deal. Any paint that you get on the rotor, you can take it off with a little bit of a thinner or a brake cleaner. But trust me, the brake pad is gonna melt that right off, so no big deal. 34 foot-pounds on these three studs, and we'll be good to tighten up the spring strut itself. Let's get it going. All right, counter hold tool. Whew, that worked, crow's foot. Got new sway bar bushings. Right here, pretty straightforward. That, the flat part you see here, the flat part goes facing the frame. Okay, that's this side. Sway bar bushings are the easiest suspension component. Make a big difference on body roll if they're fresh parts. It makes a huge uh, difference. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these bolted up here. The sway bar actually goes below your rear control arm, so remember that when you're putting it up there. All right, 14 and three quarters is the measurement, and we are exactly where we need to be, 14 and three quarters. So now I can start torquing the rear on this car. All right, 81. 81, 81, 81, 81, 81. All right, this is the tough one because the nut for this is right in here and a standard width wrench won't fit too well in here. It's too fat. So you may need one of these here. As you can see, the thickness difference is significant enough to where I can get this wrench in here, no problem, locked into place. So when I torque, I can get 113 pounds of, no, 133 foot pounds of torque on that bolt. Okay, 133. Whew, that was not fun. Okay, all right. 
56 is the magic number on this one. All right, it's 118 foot-pounds on this last one right here. So I didn't need them on these. Starting to look like a wheel again. Sixty-three foot pounds, like that. Okay, first start in a few weeks. I don't expect it to not start, but you never know. All my Idiot lights are off except for airbags, which I expected to be on because I still have a few sensors that I need to take care of. Ooh, that suspension's tight. Oh, yeah. Pretty close. Hey, pause it for a second. Come here. Look at my idiot lights. Airbag failure. That's it. That's All right. the other sensors are off. <laughs> I even got the convertible top to work. So, and I got a rear view mirror. Oh, wow. Okay, this suspension's killer already. And I haven't even gone anywhere yet. I'll see you later, alligator. Wow, incredible. I'm filling my neighborhood and all the clunking and things like that that I was used to, to hearing, gone. Just a lot of road noise because I don't have any of my door panels on or anything really. She'll go. She'll go indeed. Woo, my alignment's way off. Oh my God, my alignment's so far off. All right, well, I know what I gotta fix. Gears feel good, shifting feels good. All my idiot lights are off except for the airbag. The airbag I expected to be on because I, like I said, I have a tensioner issue and things like that, so. a little squirrely suspensions a little on the squirrely side but very very responsive this car has got a lot of things that need to be done I'm looking around in this car and I'm seeing that Oof, bad news to have a car like this is really a dream come true the suspension issues are minor but still a lot of work Well, I'm super excited about where we are with this car. As I've said before, the engine is in really good shape and looking over this car, it looks great. The suspension improvements have changed the handling in this vehicle. Like it's, it's indescribable. If you're used to driving daily driver vehicles, this car will blow your mind. You point it, it goes. You turn, it turns. It is unbelievable. So I'm really excited where this project is going. The next thing I got to do, obviously, is I got to work on the engine. So the engine, as I mentioned, has normal wear and tear. No bore scoring. Yay for that. I'm going to pull the engine out. I'm going to take care of the IMS bearing. 
and I'm also going to take care of a complete engine refresh around the top end mostly. I'm going to check the bearings and see if the bearings need a replacement, but honestly, at this point, I don't think it's necessary, but the car overall is beautiful. I'm going to show you around the car while I'm narrating so you can really appreciate the look. So this car has been through a lot, but now that I've owned it for six months, well, five months, I'm absolutely in love with her. I may not ever give her up. I may trade her for a turbo, but this body style is the last of its kind. The 996 really, and the 997 really were the last of the short wheelbase Porsche 911s. After this, the 991s and the 992s took it to an entirely different level of sophistication, of handling, as well as size. It increased it at least two to three inches. I'll have to confirm that number. But this car, the lines are beautiful. And this is a narrow body. So if this car was a turbo or a 4S, it'd have a wide body, it would look even better. But look at this car. Classic. Classic in. Let's take a look at the interior. What a disaster. But check out my gauges and my black steering wheel. So I got a lot to do. I have, I have the wheel alignment to do, obviously, but once I'm done fixing Project Olaf, I have an oil leak I need to deal with that car. This car will go back in the garage and it probably won't see the street again until I take care of the engine refresh. So, a lot to do, but I'm really, really happy. So with that said, really appreciate you watching. If you like what you saw, be sure to hit that thumbs up. If you didn't like it, hit the thumbs down, but at least tell me why. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe because there's no way I can continue this project without your support. Thanks for watching Yogi's Garage. We'll see you next time. Let's go driving. Yo, yo, microphone check, make it a microphone check. Give it a microphone, I make them make it a microphone dead. Don't step to me, newbie, I could truly be moody. I could have played the bridge in the movies. I've been a part-time shadow cat, part-time. That is not a guy that I would ever want to try to battle rap. Snap, crack a pop, mind fried to a crisp. Make an MC into a wide-eyed lunatic. Rap, 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 rap.